Hello, my name is Hassan Ahmed and I am a technical marketing engineer for Cisco SD-WAN product team. In this video, we will see what dynamic on-demand tunnel is about. The default design of SD-WAN is to form a full mesh tunnel between the edge routers with all the available T-locks. The traffic flows directly between the sites. For large-scale deployments, Having a full mesh design will increase complexity in the network. So the preferred method would be to break down the network into either a centralized or a regional hub and spoke design. In this way, the traffic from one side to another side gets routed through the hub location. This is where the dynamic on-demand tunnel comes into picture. As the name implies, this is a dynamic way of forming BFD tunnels from one side to another which gets triggered only when there is some traffic received by one of the sites destined to another site. In this case, host 1 and host 2 send some traffic to the branch routers. As a result, the tunnel shown in the red is the dynamic tunnel that gets established between site 2 and site 3. The traffic directly flows through this newly created dynamic on-demand tunnel. In the event when there is no traffic between the sites, this tunnel will tear down automatically once the idle timeout value expires. Here are the advantages of using dynamic on-demand tunnel. It reduces bandwidth use in the network because the tunnels which are in, in inactive state do not require to send bidirectional forwarding deduction probes, which are the BFD probes. You can form direct tunnels between the spokes while also optimizing the CPU and the memory usage. It improves latency in the hub and spoke deployments because you don't need to route the traffic always through a centralized hub or data center location. It also improves the performance, especially for less powerful platforms operating in a full mesh network. Now let's see how the dynamic tunnel gets established. In this topology, we've got a hub edge router located at the top center of the screen and there are two edge routers configured as on-demand located at branch 1 and branch 2 sites respectively. Traffic from host 1 which is behind branch 1 is sent to host 2 which is behind branch 2. Initially, the traffic will flow through the backup path which is the hub location. This traffic is now received by host 2 on the service side VPN of branch 2. On branch 1, the data plane will send a tunnel setup message towards a control plane. The control plane will respond and direct the data plane to provision a tunnel towards branch 2. Branch 1 will now send BFD probes over this new tunnel. At this stage, BFD probes are just sent in one direction only. The other side, which is branch 2, triggers the tunnel formation process only when some data traffic is received on branch 2 edge router, which is the return traffic from host 2. As noticed in step 3 and step 4, the same process is followed in step 7 and step 8 where the tunnel setup message is sent from data plane to control plane on branch 2 and the control plane will respond to data plane and direct it to provision a tunnel towards branch 1. Now, BFD probes will be sent from branch 2 towards branch 1. This completes the tunnel formation process between the branch 1 and branch 2 edge routers. At this stage, the control plane on each side will now update their routing table so that the next stop now points the traffic towards the branch T locks directly as compared to the next stop earlier, which used to point towards the hub location. Now, traffic will directly flow over this new dynamic on-demand site-to-site tunnel. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos on SD-WAN features.